and welcome to Roanoke County Today, a monthly half-hour program dedicated to sharing the latest government-related news, programs, and events with you. I'm Teresa Hall, Roanoke County's Public Information Director. Just ahead on this month's show, we'll take a look at some of the fantastic summer camps available to kids of all ages. Plus, Roanoke County recently held an economic summit, what that all means for you. Those segments and much more, hope you'll stay with us. Road Call Alert is Roanoke County's new citizen alert and warning system. In the event of a local emergency or disaster, Roanoke County will contact all landline telephones in the county's 911 database with any important information and instructions you need to know. To receive notifications from Road Call Alert via email, on your cell phone or VoIP phone, you'll need to set up an online account. There's no cost for citizens to sign up, but phone usage or text charges may apply. Go to RoanokeCountyVA.gov slash Alert and sign up today. Roanoke County recently held an economic summit in conjunction with the Roanoke Regional Partnership. The economic summit was held here at Green Ridge Recreation Center and nearly 100 people from across the valley came out to attend the summit. Jill Loop is acting director of Roanoke County's Economic Development Department and was instrumental in helping to plan this economic summit, which by all estimations has really been hailed as a, as a true success. Jill, congratulations. Thank you. Let's go ahead and, and start with who all was invited. It was quite a few people that were invited to the economic summit. All of the local governments throughout the Roanoke Valley were included in the summit. Uh, Roanoke City, Roanoke County, Franklin County, Bottom Tot, City of Salem, Town of Benton, as well as Montgomery County were included in the event. And I know this, this economic summit was called for by Chairman Mike Altizer with the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors. Very important to him. What was the actual purpose behind it? Well, the purpose of the event was to get all of the regional leaders together to talk about economic development opportunities for our region and how we can better position ourselves for the future uh, in terms of attracting new businesses to uh, the Roanoke area. Yeah. So that was the main goal. And I know there was a guest speaker who came in and, and spoke a, a great deal about economic development. I think his message was well received. Yeah, that was John Rhodes. He's with uh, Morin, Stahl & Boyer. It's an economic development consulting firm. And John's message was essentially the strategic uh, positioning uh, of attracting businesses to our region. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, discussing how we can be better prepared for economic development. What kind of sites do we need to have? What kind of uh, uh, labor force do we need to have? How do we position ourselves for the future? Sounds like that message was well received because there, there was an outcome at the end of the meeting. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, yes, the goal was to bring everyone together and ultimately they all agreed to say, yes, we want to continue studying our assets, our opportunities, and how we can take the next step in, in being prepared. Uh, there was a lot of pieces to that puzzle naturally course, as, yes. as we try to uh, attract businesses to the Roanoke Valley, but uh, everyone agrees that they want to continue the discussions. And, and I think um, Chairman Altizer was very pleased that um, at the end of the meeting, each locality stood up and had a message. And it seemed like the message, um, to me, I, I was there sit sitting in the audience, it seemed to be unity. You know, we're all in this together, mm -hmm. so let's come back together again. Did you take that away as well? I did, and you know, this region's been working together for years. This is not a new concept, but the, the issue is how economic development is changing, how True. companies are doing their site selection process, what are they looking for? And today it's speed, it's time, it's being ready, mm -hmm. being prepared, having ready to go, sites. Um, in, in our area, it's kind of difficult to do with the mountains that we have. So Plus, everything is so fast-paced, too. Exactly. You know, you, um, I think you do an outstanding job, and a lot of the, the reason behind that is you're always on the go. Oh, yes. We stay busy, um, and it's not easy to do uh, in terms of being ready for development. It's expensive, and it's, it's challenging, but our, our leadership has said, yes, we want to come together. We want to figure out how we can make this happen, and that's what we're going to do. Well, when do you um, think we're going to hear more. The summit was February 28th, but when do you think that the public is going to hear more? Well, we agreed to meet uh, between now and this summer, and we're going to come back in July with another 
further open discussion of uh, what the next steps are. All right. Well, I think um, just in closing, I'd like to share a little bit about your website so that folks who are watching mm -hmm. and want to know more about economic development in Roanoke County, they can go to the web page that you have. It's actually separate from the main Roanoke County website. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, our website is yesroanoke.org, and uh, we try to market the industrial properties that we have available to companies uh, that are looking to locate here, in addition to all of the um, demographic data that they're seeking. So it's, it's a very um, attractive site. Well, it's an attractive site, and you got an attractive uh, domain name too, yesroanoke.org. I think that's very easy to remember and that's what you want folks to take away. I want them to remember it and it proves that we're ready to go. All right. Well, we definitely know that from your work at the summit. Thank you so much. Jill Loop, Acting Director of Roanoke County's Economic Development Office. We look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And stay with us. There's much more Roanoke County today just ahead. Volunteer firefighters respond to all types of emergencies. Volunteer firefighters fight fires. Volunteer firefighters save lives. Do you have what it takes? Visit RoanokeCountyVA.gov slash FRVolunteer or call 540-777-8706 to become a Roanoke County Fire and Rescue Volunteer Firefighter. have put together an amazing program. It's on April 12th and 13th. We are celebrating the arts. We are bringing in artists, we are bringing in screenwriters, directors, Sandra Van Netta from The Notebook. Um, it's just going to be an amazing experience. Nancy Stafford from Matlock. Then um, several folks from Alone Yet Not Alone will be with us. And we're starting off with an opening reception here at the Holiday Inn Roanoke, which will be wonderful. You can get up close and personal to all of the stars, ask them all kinds of questions. Then on Saturday, we're spending the entire day at Burton Center for the Arts. We have over 25 different workshops, as well as film screenings. We'll have vendors there dealing with memorabilia from all kinds of films. So you can kind of fill in on your collection. Then on Saturday evening, we'll be coming back here to the hotel for our closing night gala and awards, because we're also doing film screenings and taking film submissions. So we have a tremendous variety of activities and events for everybody. It is absolutely open for the general public. You can sign up online if you prefer. You can go to the county website at www.roanokecountyparks.com. You can purchase tickets just for the workshop. You can purchase tickets just for the Saturday night gala if you want to get dressed up in your finery and come, as I say, hobnob with the stars. Or you can get a combination ticket at a very good discount. We even have student, student rates. I mean, it's very affordable for everybody and everybody is invited. You don't necessarily have to sign up in advance for the workshops or the Friday night uh, reception, but you do have to purchase tickets in advance and make reservations for the Saturday night gala because there's a dinner involved. So we need to do that. It amazes me, there's such a wide variety of folks from the community that are interested. We've been talking to Virginia Tech and Hollins who has a great interest in bringing some of their students. The high schools around town have just been amazing. They're all calling, asking questions. Then just the general public is saying, oh, are you, what films are you screening? You know, just what I call film buffs. And then there are really some folks who are interested in learning about how to write a script for, for a production, you know, or the technical aspects of filmmaking. So we're getting all kinds of calls and all kinds of interest from just a wide variety and a very broad-based folks from the community. Jen Gotson will be with us, as will Rusty Whitener and George Escobar. Those three individuals are from Alone Yet Not Alone. Nancy Stafford, who you'll remember from Matlock and Season of Miracles, and Sandra Van Netta, who's very well known for the production, the, I mean for the movie, I'm sorry, The Notebook. You know, and it's just, those are just to name a few, you know. We've still got some interest. I got a call yesterday from someone who'd like to participate as well. So we're really looking forward to the caliber of folks that we're having come in, as well as to the community who is really just very excited about what we're doing. 
The date is April 12th through 13th, and that is a Friday night for the opening reception and then Saturday for the workshops and the closing gala. Contact information, you can go to the county website, www.roanokecountyparks.com. Folks are welcome to call me at our offices at 387-6078. And then, of course, we've got posters and flyers out all over town. Of course, our 14th annual Kite Festival is coming up on Saturday, April 20th. And, of course, that's free and open to the public as well. So we've got a full spring full of wonderful events and activities for just about everybody. Ah, the Kite Festival is wonderful. You know, it's a fabulous event. We, if you come early enough, while supplies last, the kids can even get free kites. We give out free t-shirts to the kids. We have all kinds of vendors. We have food vendors and craft vendors out there. We have the Richmond Air Force Kite Club that comes out every year that does demonstrations that will show you how to do wonderful things you never thought you could do with your kites. I mean, it's a fabulous day in the park. Families just come out and have a wonderful time. Oh, you see some, no, it's not just little kites, all kinds of kites, huge kites. You know, and depending on the wind, we sometimes get up the most incredibly beautifully decorated kites in the sky. It's a fabulous event. That is Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And again, that's free and open to the public. Participation in the recycling drop-off program in Roanoke County has been steadily increasing. With the increase comes growing pains. The following etiquette tips will help citizens receive the most benefit from the recycling program. Break down any boxes before placing them in the containers. We currently accept plastics and all types of cans. Do not place items with food residue in trailers. Fill trailers to capacity. When the recycling trailer is full, do not place items on the ground outside of the trailer. Visit another recycling trailer location. Please use the trailers properly. Walk the red carpet at Roanoke County's Arts and Entertainment Conference taking place April 12th and April 13th. Come meet the stars at the opening reception on Friday, April 12th at the Holiday Inn Roanoke. Work with directors, producers, screenwriters, and casting agents at the workshops on Saturday, April 13th. Enter a film festival submission. Celebrate with the stars and the guests at the closing gala on Saturday night. Don't miss the premiere of the Arts and Entertainment Conference and purchase your ticket today. Welcome back to Roanoke County today. For this segment, we are going to be focusing on Earth Day, which will be celebrated in April. Here to talk about all of the activities, I'm joined by Polly Branch and John Bryant, two folks who are volunteers for the event. Thank you all both so very much for coming out to talk about Earth Day celebrations. When I was talking to you earlier, Polly, I didn't realize how much you have planned on that Saturday. It's fantastic. Go ahead and give us the date and then we'll do a little rundown of what all is planned. It's Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Visitors are welcome to come. It's a free outdoor family festival. Uh, we'll have plenty of environmental and community service mm -hmm. groups to um, share information about the environment and what you can do um, in your own homes and businesses. It sounds, mm -hmm. it sounds very entertaining, one, but also educational. John, you said you've been involved with it since about 2009? Yeah, I've been with the Roanoke Natural Foods Co-op and we're right there in the Grandin Village, so it's definitely something that we want to be involved with. Um, and. Uh, since 2009, I've been just, it's been a pleasure to be involved with Polly and everybody else putting together the, the festival because it seems to grow every year, not only in just attendance, but people's appreciation for everything that uh, Earth Day Roanoke is about and, and uh, subsequently what Earth Day is about. So. Now you've been involved since 2009, but actually Earth Day events, Polly, you said, have been celebrated here in the Valley since 1990. That's right, that's right. There have been um, over 40 years since the 70s when it first began mm -hmm. celebrating the Clean Water Act and uh, Clean Air Act by Congress. So um, across the nation and across the world now they're being celebrated and individuals and community groups sharing ideas of how to right. reduce our carbon footprint and uh, very important mm -hmm. to folks in this valley I think. Um, John, what is your hope? What do you hope people will gain on that Saturday besides coming out and having a great time with with members of the community? Earth Day has uh, such a special significance to, to different people. For you, what is it? I think it's for me the best thing would be that people come out and learn about the different organizations in our town that are um, doing uh, great things for the environment uh, and they're everywhere I mean 
there's there's we we have between 60 to 80 vendors each each year that go out and demonstrate their involvement in keeping the valley green so they learn more about that and uh, the other hope is that Earth Day becomes just a conscious thing every day uh, we celebrate it one day a year but we hope that people are become aware of uh, their impact on the environment and that very one celebration point. changes the way they look at the whole very, year. Very good point. I'm sure, Polly, a lot of what he just said you echo as well. Oh, yes, exactly. It's very exciting. There's demonstrations of how to make compost and plant a garden <laughs> and take care of trees and ride a bike to make your own blended smoothie. <laughs> so there are a lot of fun activities as well as live music and food. For the family. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, um, before we before we wrap up, I'd like to get the date and the location and the times once again from one of you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Saturday, April twentieth, nine ten a.m. Excuse me, ten to four p.m. in the Grandin Village. It's the thirteen hundred block of Grandin Road between Memorial Avenue and Westover. All right, and it sounds like it's going to be an entertaining and educational event with with different things for folks of all ages. Exactly. Definitely a family-friendly event. Mm -hmm. Kids, kids love it. Uh, families come out. It's it's a really good environment for for everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, congratulations on everything you've done so far, and best wishes on the day of the event. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right, and stay with us. We'll be right back. Surf by the award-winning RVTV.org, the official website for Roanoke Valley Television Channel 3. The site features new content like the Media Center where you can view selected RVTV programming. Also find RVTV's daily lineup, information on RVTV shows, a photo gallery, and even a Notify Me sign up to keep you posted on upcoming RVTV events. It's all at RVTV.org, the official website for government and educational television in the Roanoke Valley. RVTV. Roco Alert is Roanoke County's new citizen alert and warning system. In the event of a local emergency or disaster, Roanoke County will contact all landline telephones in the county's 911 database with any important information and instructions you need to know. To receive notifications from Roco Alert via email, on your cell phone, or VoIP phone, you'll need to set up an online account. There's no cost for citizens to sign up, but phone usage or text charges may apply. Go to RoanokeCountyVA.gov slash RocoAlert and sign up today. Hello and welcome to Focus on Community Policing. I'm your host, Officer Eric Orange, Roanoke County Police Department's Community Policing Coordinator. I have with me Detective Adam Thompson. Welcome, Detective Thompson. Thanks, Officer Orange. Detective Thompson, there's a topic we'd like to cover today, and it's one that we feel is very important, and that's the topic of gun and firearm safety. Along those lines, are there any types of programs or literature that you would recommend for our viewers uh, when considering the purchase of a firearm or the handling of a firearm? Well, of course, the most important thing is education. Uh, educate yourself prior to and also during the purchase of the firearm and also train yourself after the purchase of the firearm. Uh, you can do this in a number of different ways. Uh, there are lots of sites on the internet that could offer you uh, just visual education, you know, steps to buying a firearm, also the purchase of what's right for you and uh, also could give you information on where to get training after the purchase of your firearm. Um, the, there are a number of firearm safety courses uh, available in the Valley that you can uh, pay a small fee and, and take. Uh, that, that would be one of the most important things that I think that you could do as a firearms owner. Okay, well, that's some good advice. In addition to, to education, what are some physical safety features that an individual should consider when purchasing or handling a firearm? Well, there are a number of different things. Um, some include the external safeties on the gun itself, the features of the weapon itself uh, that will offer safety. There are gun locks, gun safes, uh, gun boxes, uh, all kinds of different safety, external safety features and locks uh, that you can purchase um, or sometimes even obtain for free. Detective Thompson, what are some key points that you would like to touch on with our viewers regarding the handling of a firearm or some tips that you'd like to share? Well, the first and foremost is always treat a firearm as if it's loaded. Um, another thing is to educate yourself fully about the firearm. Be proficient with it. Understand how it works. Um, never use any drugs or alcohol when handling a firearm. Use high-quality ammunition uh, when you're engaged in target practice and or hunting. Another important thing is to keep your finger off the trigger unless you're ready to fire the weapon. And then finally, 
I would say, the proper storage of the weapon. That's a very good point you bring up with storage, Detective Thompson. What suggestion would you make for an individual uh, as far as a safe storing of a firearm, whether it's at home or in travel? Well, at home there are a number of different ways to store your firearm. Uh, you have to take into consideration if you have children and if you've trained your children in what to do if they encounter the firearm. But general storage could include a gun safe, um, whether it be one of the larger safes with a combination and an electronic lock uh, or some other type of lock, or a smaller, a smaller type safe that may only hold one pistol and one extra magazine. There are various, various models and brands of these that uh, are out there and I'll leave it up to the consumer to decide which is best for them. Now are there ones that are designed specifically for travel if someone was maybe going out to a location to hunt or do some target practice? The, the weapon, most weapons that you purchase come with some type of box or plastic case, especially a pistol. Most come with a plastic case which have a place for a lock that you can use for travel if you'd like. Um, Make sure you understand the concealed carry laws in the area in which you're carrying the weapon um, and transporting through. Detective Thompson, you've made reference several times to education, and I agree with you. That's very important to make sure that you're educated, regardless of what type of tool you're working with or using, in this case, a firearm. Are there any recommendations you would make as far as the education of children, uh, not just adults, in this, on this topic? Absolutely. I think that's one of the most important points is to educate our children on what to do if they come or encounter or come into contact with a firearm. When it comes to educating children, there are four important points that I often teach parents to in help instruct their children. It's stop, don't touch, leave the area, and tell an adult. And I think that that's something that if you emphasize with your children over and over, it will sink in. But it's not something that you just have to tell them one time. I think if you tell them over a, over a period of time, I think that would be more effective than just telling them one time. Well, thank you very much, Detective Thompson. I feel like you've shared some very important information with us. Um, earlier you spoke about some websites. Could you share with us a couple of those websites if some of our viewers were interested in getting more information on firearm safety that they could turn to for that? The three websites that come to mind right off the bat are the National Shooting Sports Foundation, NRA.org, and LearnAboutGuns.com. Okay, well thank you very much, Detective Thompson. I appreciate your time with us and speaking with us about this very important topic. Thank you all for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Focus on Community Policing. What's the buzz about Green Ridge Recreation Center? It's a place that's close to my house that I can come and get in shape. We saw the quality of the exercise environment and the opportunity for our kids to enjoy it and uh, take advantage of really a cutting edge fitness facility. The staff here is wonderful. They are very hands on. They love to help people. Join the fun through daily admission or membership. Green Ridge, healthy fun for everyone. Welcome back to Roanoke County Today. I'm joined by Scott Ramsberg with Roanoke County's Parks, Recreation and Tourism Department to talk about what else but summer camps. Scott, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk about what I'm sure is a fun topic for you, summer camps and getting all the kids excited and parents excited too. And one of the big ways that you reach out to folks is through your recreation magazine and this is your newest one. Absolutely, this just came out in early March. It's called Recreation Family Fun mm -hmm. Guide and this time it's over 64 pages long which is uh, quite a bit. Uh, chock full of programs for youth and adults and uh, if you look inside in the center section is uh, is all about summer camps eight pages of summer camp programs uh, really Roanoke County has the most uh, summer camp programs in the in the whole Roanoke Valley. Well, you do a fantastic job with Recreation Magazine and it goes out to 60,000 households? That's right yeah. And so a lot of people are able to to get this in the mail but you also offer it online too mm -hmm. on the Roanoke County website. Uh -huh. And tell us a little bit about the summer camps, because you said it's full of information about those. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've got some, some highlights that you'd like to share with sure, folks. Sure. Uh, Roanoke County offers programs for ages 3 all the way up to 17, which is a little unusual sure in that is. we start 
that young. The youngest programs are two or three hour programs where they meet for several days consecutively. It's mm -hmm. not a full day of camp experience because that age really can't handle it. Um, they uh, focus on, on fun like pirates or, or Treasure Island Anything or a little kid would love. or camping or trucks. Uh, cars and planes. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's what those are all about. Those camps are held at places like Green Ridge Rec Center, Brambleton Center, and Craig Center. Um, then as they get older, we have uh, uh, additional theme camps that last uh, for, for longer periods of time. Uh, and uh, then we have full day programs such camp as... Camp Roanoke. A, that's right, Camp <laughs> Roanoke. Uh, yeah. We have a, a daycare style program at Penn Forest Elementary School called uh, Kids in Camp. And we have a full day daycare style program at Green Ridge called the Green Ridge Summer Day Camp. Um, but How do you keep all this straight, <laughs> Scott? <laughs> it's a lot to talk about, and of course, the, the best way to find out is to go to Recreation Magazine or right. to uh, to go online to our website and check them out. And you have a couple of dates coming up for um, open house. That's right. You mentioned Camp Roanoke. Uh, now, Camp Roanoke is an overnight camp, but if you're on the younger end, the elementary school age, you can go just for the day with free satellite transportation included in your fee from Tanglewood Mall. Uh, and uh, Camp Rona, of course, the traditional experience with the campfires, and we have a high ropes course and a climbing wall. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really a lot of fun. And you can try that all on April 29th. Uh, this is open to the public from uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can come down to camp, uh, free hot dogs and hamburgers if you're interested in so checking out the camp. Camp Roanoke. Uh huh. Then. Camp Roanoke, which is located right off Interstate 81, exit 132 uh, near Dixie Caverns. Not uh, hard to find. So it's not too far away. It's 15, 20 minutes from the, the downtown it's area. It's a real outdoor experience from what I recall. It, you really get back to nature. If kids like that, this is the place for them. It really is. And, and the best thing about the, the April 29th event, you can come out and try things uh, like the the, uh, the climbing wall. You can try the archery range uh, and, and see if camp is right for you because, of course, camp's not for everyone. Right. And it's a fully accredited program? Uh huh. Accredited by the American Camp Association, which is the nation's highest standard for quality. Uh, camp Roanoke typically scores 99, 100% every time in their reviews. Uh, they really focus on, on safety and. Uh, Greg and Martin does a great job. Absolutely. Out there. The camp director, Greg Martin, is, is fantastic. So I urge you to come out and take a look, and you can meet Greg and the other counselors there. All right. So it sounds like we've got the, the back to nature experience, and then we have other, other programs, a variety of them from age three through, I think you said 17. That's right. So check out the, the magazine to, to really get um, an overview of everything that's offered. And pick one up at any rec center and uh, county libraries and also some area Kroger's as well. All right, and check it out online as well. Uh, there was one thing that you wanted to, to remind folks about, and that's Splash Valley. Can you believe it? We're talking about Splash <laughs> Valley, the outdoor water park. Just wanted to remind we're back for the third season this year. Uh, so come on out. Where we open uh, May 24th is our first day. That's the Friday before Memorial Day. It's hard to believe that's almost here. That's well, right. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, Scott, so much. I don't know how you keep it all straight in your mind, but certainly your magazine helps you keep on track. That's right. All right. Stay with us, everyone. There's much more Roanoke County today just ahead. Walk the red carpet at Roanoke County's Arts and Entertainment Conference taking place April 12th and April 13th. Come meet the stars at the opening reception on Friday, April 12th at the Holiday Inn Roanoke. Work with directors, producers, screenwriters, and casting agents at the workshops on Saturday, April 13th. Enter a film festival submission. Celebrate with the stars and the guests at the closing gala on Saturday night. Don't miss the premiere of the Arts and Entertainment Conference and purchase your ticket today. Higher electric bills, sticker shock at the gas pump, energy can cost a ton. But it's easy to save money and give your budget a boost. Save hundreds of dollars in energy costs by doing just a little. As much as half of the energy used in your home goes to heating and cooling. You can save a ton by making sure your home is properly sealed and insulated against the elements. Caulk window and door frames, wiring and pipe penetrations, and anywhere air leaks. Weather strip around loose window sashes and doors. Remember, do a little, save a ton. That's all for this edition of Roanoke County Today. Remember, for more information on Roanoke County events and programming, please visit our website at roanokecountyva.gov. Hope to see you again next month.